This is a small video clip of Richard Feynman in 1964 talking about his average on a ball concept. Says the following. You don't have to know what's going on anywhere outside of a little ball. If you want to know what, what the potential is here, you tell me what it is, is here. You tell me what it is on the surface of any ball, no matter how small. You don't have to look outside. You just tell me what is in the neighborhood and how much mass there is in the ball. It can be used as a mathematical trick to help predict the distribution of positive and negative electrical charge. But in this video, I want to put forward the idea that the average on a ball concept represents a fundamental geometry that forms the curvature of space-time and the probabilistic nature of quantum mechanics. Mathematically, this gives us a geometrical interpretation of the second derivative. This spherical geometry is not just in electrical charge distribution, it can also be found in Schrodinger's equation, in the wave function potential that tells us the probability amplitude of where a particle is. Feynman says, if you want to know what the potential is here, you tell me what it is on the surface of any ball. If we take Huygens' principle that says, every point on a wavefront has the potential for a new spherical wave. Each point on the curvature of a Feynman ball can represent the potential for a new photon of energy, a new oscillation or vibration, as a probabilistic future unfolds. Light is a spherical wave with particle characteristics when it interacts with the electron probability cloud that surrounds the nucleus of an atom. When this happens, it forms a photon-electron coupling, and our three-dimensional world changes slightly, with potential energy exchanging into the kinetic energy of electrons. We experience this change from the center of our own reference frame in the present moment, with a past that is gone forever, and an uncertain future coming into existence photon by photon, moment by moment, forming an infinity of possibilities and opportunities. I will let Richard Feynman have the last word on this. It always bothers me that in spite of all this local business, what goes on in a tiny, no matter how tiny a region of space, no matter how tiny a region of time, according to the laws as we understand them today, takes a computing machine an infinite number of logical operations to figure out. Now how can all that be going on in that tiny space? Why should it take an infinite amount of logic to figure out what one stinky tiny bit of space-time is going to do?